This is Norman Kissinger from Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries. Uh, happy Easter to everyone on this early Easter morning. Um, we are um, going to be speaking to you this morning. I'm going to talk to you this morning from uh, the book of Mark, uh, chapter 16. And um, talking about the uh, Easter uh, story and what it means to me and what it means to Christians all over the United States right now, all over the world, different uh, places uh, people are meeting and they're uh, rejoicing in the fact that Jesus is our risen Lord and that uh, he gave us so much. So I want to go over the Easter story this morning. I'm going to take my passage from the book of uh, Mark chapter 16 and just read the first few verses of this uh, passage here. It says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, mother, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that, might come, that they might come and anoint him. Uh, very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun was risen, and they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone of the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed with a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, where you will see him, as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, and they were afraid. Now when he rose early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, and they mourned and wept, and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Now later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and the hardness of heart because they did not believe those things which who of those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall, will follow those who believe. In my name you will cast out demons, and you will speak with new tongues, and they will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord, after he had spoken to them, was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. This chapter here, there's many, several chapters in the Bible that talk about the resurrection here, but um, uh, I like this chapter here because of the fact that when this chapter here talks about the uh, the resurrection, it to me speaks of the um, action of the resurrection uh, and what is taking place. And by that I mean that uh, everybody here in this passage, all the players are going about their business, doing what they thought they should be doing, even though of course the death of Jesus was such a profound thing, but the women that were coming to the tomb here to anoint him were doing what they would do in any death and uh, in preparing a body which would have been a normal ritual for them. Uh, they were busy um, going about doing the things that they thought they were supposed to do and the other disciples who were afraid, afraid that they were going to be arrested by the Romans, were doing exactly what they thought that they were supposed to do in order to protect themselves. And even though these were extraordinary time, everybody was doing and their own thing, protecting themselves, uh, going about their life, uh, 
trying to uh, live life effectively, even in spite of all the things that had happened there with Jesus. And when the women got to the tomb, um, it was already empty because Jesus had already done his great miracle in his resurrection. And he changed the course of history right at this moment. And so uh, this week I was talking to uh, some young people and I said that the resurrection was the most important day uh, of the year. And even more important than we usually celebrate, of course, the birth of Christ during the Christmas season. Um, that may, may or may not have been the time that Jesus was born, but that's the time that we celebrate it. But I said the resurrection was the most important day of the year. I've heard it been said that, uh, that you know, most of the world would recognize Christianity based on the cross <clears throat> and uh, based on the symbol of the cross. But the reality is, is that some have suggested that Christianity is probably more accurately represented actually by the, uh, by the empty tomb. That if we had some sort of a symbol of an empty tomb, that would be the real representation of what Christianity would actually be or actually look like. Why was the resurrection so important? Well, many, many reasons, but uh, one of the most important is that the process of all of us being saved could not happen except through the resurrection. So oftentimes I even think as a pastor that I would um, preach on the Easter morning and I would talk about uh, the um, or I would talk about the death of Jesus and throughout the year talk about tell, tell somebody that Jesus died for their sins. And we focus on his death, which of course is very important because without his death we cannot have salvation. But the reality is, is that without his resurrection, the salvation process is not complete. So just as we talk about baptism and the symbol of baptism, which is uh, when somebody is baptized uh, in the uh, immersion tradition, they're laid into the water and then they're uh, raised out of the water. So their sins are buried and then they're raised uh, to new life. And so that same thing is happening here. Without the completion, uh, Jesus dying, which made it possible for all of us to be saved from our sins, Jesus being raised for the dead makes it possible for all of us to be raised to a new life. So it completes the process of salvation. And that is the thing that makes it most important. But he changed their life that day. They were going about doing what? probably any of us would do. Um, I would like to think that I was um, probably not like the apostles who would be hiding at that moment and, and in fear and confusion, but I'm sure I would be just as afraid and confused as they were. Uh, but everybody was doing what they thought they needed to do in order to protect themselves and in order to live life. But Jesus raising from the dead... God raising Christ from the dead made it possible for their life to be changed forever. So how did every one of these people were changed? Well, obviously after this time, and we don't have time to go into this, but that the, um, the disciples after this time were no longer uh, hiding. Uh, they were no longer afraid. They were no longer confused. After this time, we read in the scriptures, they went out and literally within a few decades, uh, witness Jesus to an entire world and salvation to an entire dying world uh, after this time because the self because the resurrection made it possible for a salvation now to be to all men and I noticed that <clears throat> salvation and the gospel transcended everything it transcended the Roman world and the politics of the day the resurrection transcended the politics of the day, which today is such an important thing during these times in America where our politics are just absolutely crazy. It transcended the, um, uh, any of the social things that were happening in anybody's life. Uh, it transcended every religion that was going on in the Roman world. There was every form of religion that you could possibly think of, uh, either through the Greeks or gods or the Roman gods or all the pagan gods that were there, or the philosophies that were uh, taking, uh, the people believed in at the time, it transcended all of that and it overpowered all of that because the resurrection 
and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the most powerful thing in history. And so Jesus then, after he's raised from the dead, and we don't have time to go over many more things that the gospel did, but I notice here that in actions, the actions of the people were changed by the event of the resurrection. They were going in one direction, and then when the resurrection took place, they were going in totally the opposite direction. The disciples went from being afraid uh, to uh, the opposite direction of being so bold they would speak the gospel to anybody, even if it meant they were going to be executed for doing so. They didn't care anymore because the resurrection meant so much to them, and uh, it changed their life forever. And uh, the, the women were here to anoint a dead body, and they left that the anointing of a dead body to go the opposite direction to witness uh, to a risen Lord and uh, that changed their life. And I want you to notice that uh, another thought as I think about the resurrection chapter here uh, or this resurrection chapter that um, that not only did it change the direction that people were going but it was a personal thing that every one of them had a personal experience with the resurrection. It was a personal thing. It wasn't just a fact that happened. Uh, people of the world can know that, for example, that um, history teaches or the Bible teaches that Jesus was born and they can, even without even being a Christian, maybe enjoy some sort of, um, of a religious experience with that. They can think that it's a good thing that Jesus came and, as the world says, preaches that people are nice to each other or, or, or whatever. But the gospel, uh, but the resurrection is different. When somebody gets a hold of the resurrection in their life and they understand that Jesus died for their sins and he was raised to make it possible for all of us to have new life and to redeem all of creation from the power of sin, then that changes their life forever. It is really not at the birth of Jesus that we are, are saved. The birth of Jesus made it possible for salvation to happen in the future. During the um, um, Easter season, uh, it is the death and the resurrection and the completion of Jesus being raised from the dead because the grave could not hold him that made it possible for their lives to be changed forever. They were not just changed because the event happened. They were changed because they had an individual experience with the event uh, at that time. And that's what changed them for forever because of that, uh, their experience of that event. And uh, this passage here, which is the most concise and kind of how it explains um, uh, everything, I think, and, and uh, of the entire event that, that took place here, uh, after Jesus appeared to all of the people that were most important that needed to uh, be able to um, move the church and the message forward, uh, then he goes and uh, he goes to the before them to Galilee and he continues to minister into their life. And I think that we uh, we think of Jesus as appearing to people here and there, but the Lord was continuing to minister. Uh, into the life of, of the disciples here and, and as he appeared to them at different times. But he then gives them the commission and he tells them that from the resurrection then comes the commission. And the commission is is for us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're at a time now, 2,000 years later, where most of the world, not there's still maybe a few isolated places, but most of the world, the gospel has reached those places. But all of us, though, have a different mission, and that mission is is that as we have opportunity, we need to be telling our neighbors that Jesus is risen. If they have somebody that they lost, uh, that they cared about, we have a risen Lord, and everybody's going to be resurrected. The resurrection makes it possible for us to overcome the power of sin, the resurrection makes it possible for us to um, um, to uh, live a victorious Christian life. And as I sit here and every year that, that I've ever preached a Easter ser uh, sermon, I try to explain the principles, I realize that um, it is not something that is so easily explained 
it is only something like the folks here in this passage can only experience. They can only experience uh, the resurrection. You, you don't. Um, it is not just an event that happens. It's an event that has to be experienced in your life as an individual. Uh, our mission here at uh, Redeeming Time Brothers Ministries is to equip Christians and uh, to be able to minister to uh, the world around them. Our mission here is to attempt to uh, tell others, of course, about Jesus and um, about his death and his resurrection. And it's been said that um, it's not so much what Jesus uh, who, what Jesus said, although, of course, everything he said was truth and it was life, but it was what he did that made a difference in the world. It was his sinless life, his death and his resurrection that changed the whole course of history. And so we want the world to know that, and we want to uh, tell everyone that, and we want to encourage everyone, as we have opportunity, that we would lead other people into the experience of the resurrection through salvation. The days are short. The time is short. I do not know of a, really of any, any friend of mine or any preacher that I know of or any Christian that I talk to that does not believe that very likely that we are in the end times. Um, even if that were not the case, certainly in America and around the world, there is uh, all kinds of spiritual and different types of upheavals going on, that at, that at this time, as far as men have always needed Jesus for salvation, but at this time, our nation and our world need the risen Lord again and uh, need to experience him on a, uh, on a personal level so that it changes their life forever. Uh, people who have been hurt or healed by the resurrection, people who have been uh, full of, have lived life of sins, have been uh, delivered by the resurrection. Uh, countries that have um, been going in a direction of destruction have had prosperity again uh, and revival because of the resurrection. And basically the resurrection answers every need of every heart, of every political situation that has ever happened in world history. Oh, if I could only explain it in a way um, that it would make sense. Those of you who are saved already know it. Those of you who have not had, have not made Jesus Lord of your life, have not experienced yet, maybe that yet, but all of us um, are changed by the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my hope that like the women going to the tomb, like the disciples who were um, hiding uh, that your life would be changed forever and go in a completely opposite direction because the resurrection would make such a difference in your life as it did in my life when I was a little boy. And uh, I asked Jesus into my heart and he changed my life forever. We serve a faithful God who does uh, wonderful things. We serve a giving God who gave us so many things and answers so many prayers, but he gives us salvation uh, God bless each and every one of you. Uh, I'm going to pray here, and then we'll close uh, this morning. And um, so let's just go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless this resurrection morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of your wonderful, wonderful blessings. We thank you for your word. We thank you for you, what you did for us in sending your son Jesus to die on the cross, to be raised the third day, and make it possible for salvation to be complete for all of us. May this morning, may the resurrection change lives in churches all across this country and around the world. May the resurrection save people from the impossible. And uh, I thank you so much, Lord, that you're a God of possibilities. Thank you for all you do. And thank you for what you graciously did for us that we do not deserve the, these Easter mornings as we celebrate them every year since since uh, Jesus went back to heaven. Come again quickly. Thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you and keep you. 
uh, this Easter morning. May you have a wonderful day as you think about Christ and all that he's done for us. God bless you.